One, two, one, two, one, two. Good afternoon, everybody. Stunning conditions in Sydney for this afternoon's clash between two heavyweights of the MPL New South Wales men's competition in round 10. Apia Leichhardt hosting Sydney United 58 in a repeat of last year's Waratah Cup final.
round between Arby Leichhardt and Sydney United 58. So I draw your attention to the evacuation notice, so if you can just draw your attention to the screen. Number six, Adam Service. Number seven, Jordan Ivanich. Number eight, Shunta Nakamara. Number nine, Patrick and Tell Me. Number ten, Carlos de Oliveira. Number eleven, Matthew Hatch. Number twelve, Marco Amram Bakis. Number 13, Alessandro Lacandra. Number 14, Liam McGinn. Number 15, Tariq Mayer. Number 17, Matthew Nikolovsky. Number 19, Aiden Milicevic. Number 21, Dajan Bakken Elandowski. Number 22, Stephen D. Robila. The manager, of course, is Zelko Kelich, with the assistant coach as Anthony Craig.
now for the mighty Lycan. Starting with number one, Anthony Buzanis. Number two, Saya Kabayashi. Number four, Josh Simmons. Number nine, Ben Gibson. Number 14, Jack Armson. Number 15, Temba Guatemala. Number 16, Sean Simmons. Number 17, Jordan Segreto. Number 18, and the captain, Adrian Uccino. Number 22, Eddie Caspers. Number 23, Dakota Askew. And for the bench, Arpia Lycard, you've got number seven, Jack Stewart. Number eight, Nick Sullivan. Number 11, Rory Jordan. Number 19, Louis Detroit. Number 20, Alexander Parks. And number 41, Nick Azone. The first great coach, of course, is Franco Parisi and assistant coach, David Capuzzo. The referees for today's match is Danny Horstead with his assistant referees, Aronath Gobinath and Mason Griffin, with the fourth official being Ro Rowan Fisher. Good afternoon, everybody. Stunning conditions greet us at Homebush in the heart of Sydney's Olympic Park, playing temporary home to Arpia Leichhardt this afternoon as they host fellow heavyweights, Sydney United 58, in round 10 of the MPL New South Wales men's. Alex Molchanoff along with you for all the action in the first of our games coming to you on the Football New South Wales YouTube page this afternoon across our men's and women's competitions. Plenty of action for you to take in wherever you're watching around the world. Thank you for joining us. Let's take you straight to the team news for these two, and there's not too much of it. Both unchanged from their fixtures last weekend, although having made some changes during the week for their two cup fixtures, we'll get on to those stunning results in the course of the pro in the course over the course of the broadcast. But let's uh, bring you those starting lineups now. In goal for Arpia Leichhardt again this afternoon is number one Anthony Bazanis in front behind the back four of number 23 Dakota Askew, number 15 Temba Muatamalo, number four the captain Josh Simmons, and number two the left back Sayat Kambiashi. A midfield three of number 18 Adrian Uccino, number 14 Jack Armson, and number 22 Eddie Caspers. A front three of number 25, Sean Simmons off the left. Number 17, Jordan Segreto, the top scorer for Arpia so far this season off the right. In behind, the free scoring and the man enjoying his start to life in Arpia colours. Number nine, Ben Gibson. A loss last weekend in unfortunate circumstances for Sydney United 58 against their rivals Rockdale Illenden. They'll be looking to bounce back today. Zelko Kalat seen fit not to make any changes though. So they look like this. In goal again, number one, Oliver Kalatz behind a back four of number three, Bailey Rule. Number 14, Liam McGing. Number four, Adrian Vlastelitz of the captain. And number 11, the left back, Matt Hatch. A midfield four for Kalatz. Number 19, Aidan Milicevic back into the side after missing the cup tie in midweek off the right. Number five, Anthony Tomalic partners. Number 15, Tarek Meyer in midfield with number 10, Carlos de Oliveira off the left. Front two, once again, have been rather fearsome since their recombination together about a month ago. Number eight, Shunta Nakamura, and number nine, Patrick Antelmi. So it will be a third of the way through the season at the end of the 90 minutes today, and should Arpia claim a third straight win this afternoon, they'll sit just a point behind league leaders, the Western Sydney Wanderers. 
for Sydney United this afternoon presents an opportunity to close the gap on their old rivals. Recovery after a slow start. Steadied last weekend with that loss late on that I mentioned against Rockdale. A win would bring them within two points of their opponents today. Bright sunshine. Just about 24 degrees at kickoff. Yeah, a bit further west than we're used to being for Apia Leichhardt home games. A change of situation at Lambert Parkman. It wasn't available for play as expected today. The 20s fixture has been postponed for the foreseeable. Still getting the first great action at this gorgeous venue where Sydney FC women's team played a, a home fixture a little bit earlier in the year. Interesting to see if it becomes a more regular fixture for football. Certainly the surface has been delivered for the players. It, it's absolutely sparkling. And uh, so it's contrast that we're seeing another of the MPL New South Wales men's games being played on natural turf. That's the exception rather than the rule nowadays. This is, of course, a replay of last year's Waratah Cup final, so Apia Leichhardt might have a little bit of revenge in mind as well today. That win for Sydney United in extra time after Sean Simmons, the man on the ball, was sent off in the first half of that game, denying them what would have been a, the first double in MPL New South Wales football since Abbas Saad's Sydney Olympic side managed it in 2018. Wasn't to be, but such is the strength of this Arpia squad, which has been strengthened again this season. Seen plenty of new faces across the starting lineup over the course of the first few months. Say Akambiashi is one of those, but he's conspired to turn it over with Sean Simmons there. Maya has been the beating heart of Sydney United's midfield so far this season, and he's found Matt Hatch, who's loving life as a left fullback at the moment. Can he deliver a telling cross here? And tell me, might, f might have felt he should have got his head on that. Arpia Leichhardt breathing a sigh of relief that he didn't. And just a little bit of early pressure being put on by the visitors. Lesevich, who was not part of the team that took on Bull AFC in the cup in midweek, at least not from the start. It's a convincing win for Sydney United 58, in which Antelby was in form, but he's put this one the wrong side of the post. I was just talking about what goal scoring for me. Been in three goals in midweek against Bull Eye, but he couldn't find the back of the net there. More than a moment's panic at the back for Arpia in the start to this one. Moving the ball a little bit more tidily now. Askew pushing forward. Delivered a terrific performance in that cup final. Last at one stage with Temple Boatamalo and the now departed Yanni Nicolau to go man to man. As a back three chasing the game. A sterling job of it, starting in a more regulation right fullback position as he has for the majority of the start to this season. I mentioned Sydney United's win in the cup in midweek. Harpia Leichhardt actually trailed, believe it or not, against Hazelbrook FC of the Nepo Nepean Association. They went on to win 19 1. Yes, you heard that correctly. Ben Gibson was on fire, getting four of those, and he's looking to run at McGing, who thought he won the ball fairly. Referee Danny Horstead today disagreed. I think it might have been for the pull on the shirts rather than the sliding challenge. Arpia won't mind either way. They've got a very dangerous set-piece opportunity and a couple of very proficient takers in discussion about who's to take it. Kambiashi scored a number of them over his years, his three seasons at Manly United, but it looks as though he's going to be taken off this one. Jordan Segreto, six goals in his nine games to start the season. 
Already a career best in this competition. Four in the wall for Kalatz, and it was always going to struggle to get back down over what was a very tall wall. Didn't quite have the bend that Segreto needed on it. And Kalatz happy to see it strike the stanchion behind his goal. Much of that cup final last year, this is a, a fixture that has been a rather frequent one in big games over the last decade or so. It's a 2019 grand final played between these two amongst countless other finals. And of course is part of the equation today with teams chasing top six football. But for the first time it is, it is a top six in the MPL New South Wales men's rather than the long-standing top five format going to a, an A-League style of playoff series. Might be a like out. We'll see themselves in the top two today if they're able to claim all three points. Sydney United will raise themselves back into the finals football spot. Well, it must be said there's a, a long, long way to go, as these players know. Here's Jack Armson. was on the score sheet last weekend against Wollongong Wolves and that important win for up here down at Wynn Stadium. There's a good crowd in today despite the change of venue. Sydney United support always travel well. It's a nice bit of atmosphere around the ground here at the Sydney Olympic Athletic Centre. Josh Simmons looking upfield, but forced to turn back to Pizanis in goal. Been battling for the number one spot with young Alex Parks, who's done well when he has been brought in. A, a couple of little niggles here and there. His first season with Arpia Leichhardt after the move from uh, Sutherland. Is Eddie Caspers also in his first season with Arpia. It's been a fine addition who the Leichhardt faithful of grown very fond of in his early stages in maroon and blue. Mizuchino needs no introduction. Beautiful switch of play for Segreto. Looking to play the cross in early to Ben Gibson. That was blocked by De Oliveira, who's been called on more defensively than in an attacking sense to this point. Lovely work from Askew to make sure his side kept hold of the football. Gets it back off Matamalo and then turns it over. All that sharp work undone. At least for the moment, Vlasilica had to be aware of the attention of Gibson. Found its way to Nakamura one way or the other. And then Hatch is happy for it to uh, travel over the touchline. The little hoarding at the side of the, vi <laughs> the side of the pitch, just catching out of fourth official Rowan Fisher. Brought a couple of ironic cheers. A wry smile from him. Gibson not timing his run quite to perfection. The Manly Junior. Spent a couple of seasons with the Sydney FC MPL side. Not able to get a start in the A-League, so turning his vision to one of the biggest clubs in New South Wales to try and find his way into a professional contract. Jack Armson's been very close to that, as I say, can be Ashy. He's got a couple of good ones to learn off. He chose to let that run for Askew. He was looking back central for his number nine. It's eventually cleared, but only behind for a Arpia Leichhardt corner. For the first time this afternoon, the Sydney United defenders were really facing their own goal. Turned around by a beautiful ball over the top. Defending not done. A little bit of a different uh, challenge for Armson, who will deliver this ball to enter onto the running track. Still manages a decent ball in. McGing initially away. <laughs> Milicevic getting back to doing the tidying up. He's uh, meeting with one of his old teammates at the Central Coast Mariners this afternoon in Jordan Segreto. 
spent a couple of years there together. And to Nick Montgomery and then Andrew Christensen for a time. Josh Simmons for his brother Sean. Chino. And a well time sliding challenge by Milicevic, but it wasn't enough to win the ball back. Kamiyashi trying to take on his man on the far side. It's well dealt with by Bailey Rule. Scored one of the contenders for goal of the season a couple of weeks ago. It's the Sutherland Sharks, always a team Sydney United have done well against, particularly on their home ground. It's well read by Maya, who's been in fine form to start this season. Oliveira stretching for that one. The attention of Askew, enough to draw a sloppy touch. Seems we pan down there. They always operate in tandem. Franco Parisi and David Deputo. Let's see either of them sat down on the makeshift bench as it is today for too long. Nice switch of play from Antelmi. His bright orange boots today. Easy to pick out. Flassel, I don't know if it was meant for Hatch, but he's managed to chase it down. And now he's in a crossing position. Another dangerous one fired in. And Aidan Milicevic is on the end of it. One winger to the other. And Sydney United have the early advantage. Beautifully worked move from the visitors. Came through midfield and then Vlastelitsa played a beautiful ball. Whether he meant it or not, I don't think Sydney United will care. Matthew Hatch, who has been such a weapon since his move to left fullback. It's been a masterstroke from Zelko Kalats, who is really seeing the most out of him. Another goal involvement from the assist. And a cool-headed finish from Aidan Milicevic, who gets his second goal of the season. Highly touted the talent of Aidan Milicevic when he was at the Central Coast Mariners. Such a wonderful technical ball player. Starting in a little bit of a different position for Zelko Kalats out on the right, but he's really taken to it. Now Matthew Hatch is having to do the defensive side of his job against another one of his former teammates in Jordan Segreto. Spent the season together at the Central Coast Mariners as well. Tarek Maya was weaving his way through a forest of maroon but couldn't keep the ball in play. Puccino challenged by Maya. That's going to be an interesting little battle through the middle to keep an eye on. There was a fair bit of fire in that Waratah Cup final. You'll remember at the end of last season... These are two teams who know each other very well. There was a warm embrace between uh, Adrian Vlasilitzer and Adrian Uccino at the toss before the game. It's a dangerous ball in again. And there's a chance on the, well, half clearance. And Bailey Rule, who scored a belter of a goal from that sort of range a couple of weeks ago. His eyes lit up. Technique not quite as true as it was a couple of weeks ago. But it's Sydney United have had the better of the near opening quarter of an hour. I feel like I've been caught on the back foot a little. And that's another poor ball out from Kambayashi. He's not having his finest afternoon. Moyes ball read by Moatamalo. Gorgeous touch from Armson. The pass didn't quite match it though. And Vlastelitzer has found Hatch again. This is becoming almost a repeat of the first goal. Josh Simmons intervention as unconvincing as it was was enough to snuff out the danger eventually goodness me Dakota Askew is being put down under all sorts of pressure the Oliveira just drifting in from the left taking him with him and Hatch is 
Got all sorts of space with which to play. He's toying with the RPL Leichhardt defence at the moment. Milicevic chasing after this one. Kambiashi wins the foot race. One of the unusual starts in doing preparation for this afternoon was City United's terrific record away at RPL. Of course, most of those games, in fact, all of them have been played at Lambert Park, but they... Have nothing to fear facing Apia over the last few years away from home. And that's always doubled their lead. Given all the time he wanted inside the box. And you don't need to afford that to Patrick and tell me for him to find the back of the net. Apia asleep at the wheel in defence. And Sydney United taking full advantage. They've come out flying this afternoon. First goal coming for the left. This one from the right. Doesn't seem to matter where it's coming from at the moment. Arpia can't deal with it. They came into this game as marginal favourites. They've got a real hill to climb if they're to get back into this one now. Goal scorer number nine, Patrick tell me. Arpia fans' minds will be cast back to round one where they were taken in similar circumstances, a little by surprise by Blacktown City. Went on to lose that game 6-3. When teams are getting a roll on against them, it's been a challenge for them to turn the tide this season. Strong front runners, but not quite as comfortable coming from behind. They had to do it so rarely last season. Have they got the character and the composure to think their way out of this one? <laughs> Thankfully for Arpia, there are plenty of attacking weapons on the bench this afternoon. Jack Stewart is one of those. You might have heard that call from the crowd. Bring those benches to you in just a moment. The back line of Sydney United, who have had their issues at times this season. They've seemed to have shored themselves up over the past month or so. But Arpia have barely made a dent in their defensive line at the moment. Struggling to play through midfield. Tarek Meyer and Anthony Tomalic have had the run of things. But say it can be Ashy's trying to get his team going the other way. Holds it up and waits for options. Eventually arrive. Kasper's back for Kambiashi. Now he switches it out to his opposite fullback, Dakota Askew. will have a crack on his left foot. And, ooh, and Kalats has made a complete mess of it. Got back to his feet and smothered the rebound. Well, there was the initial spill by Kalats, and then he slipped as he tried to return to his feet and claim it. Jack Armson might feel he should have scored. Can't take your eyes off this one at the moment. Hatch. Searching ball. Picked out Milicevic, and then tell me there again, just played a yard behind him. Arpia not able to deal with Sydney United when they go direct at the moment. Kasper's trying to stride out of midfield. Rule dealing with it. Wanted the free kick, it wasn't coming forthcoming from referee Horstead. Rather calmer moment of clarity from Kalatz as he played that one out. Two goals to Sydney United. If you're just joining us, Aiden Milicevic, after less than 10 minutes, before the advantage was doubled by the man about to get onto this ball, Patrick Anselmi, spinning on it, away from Uccino. Back for Tomalic and Nakamura, who's barely been in the game, one of Sydney United's best players so far this season, hasn't needed to be. Blastelitsa. Having a field day with that wand of a left foot that he has. Tomalic. This time it's McGing's ball. And again they're off the shoulder. This time through Tarek Mayu who found his way into the attacking line. His shot needs saving from Pizanis. Well, 
Might be a full of experienced heads, which they are through their spine. Those of Simmons and Matamalo and Uccino, that was the core on which the team was built that won the Premiership last season. That's a better ball out from Watamalo. Juan Segreto is trying to get more involved off the right. Bouncing off Caspers. Oh, and this time it's a moment of hesitation for Sydney United. Marcelitz is just having to put his foot through it before anything of serious note generated. Josh for Sean Simmons. And now Kambayashi becoming increasingly involved down the left. Might look to line up himself. Well, it was an audacious attempt and the execution didn't match the idea whatsoever. Bring you those benches now. We haven't had time. Such has been the uh, frequent nature of the action so far this afternoon. Mentioned Jack Stewart's there for Franco Parisi, as well as Nick Sullivan, who's got a goal in him as well. Rory Jordan scored in the Waratah Cup final last season. Number 19, Louis de Troya. Up to Sydney after such a stellar career in the MPL in South Australia. Alex Parks, I've mentioned already in the broadcast, as well as the reserve goalkeeper. And number 26 is Nick Azone. For Sydney United, 58, and Zelko Kalats. I think he'll be thinking about changes at the moment. But number two, Christian Gonzalez is there. Number seven, Jordan Ivancic. Number 13, Alessandro Lacalandro got on the score sheet in midweek. Number 21, Dayan Bakadanikoski. Number 22, Stefan de Robillard. Number 17, Matthew Nikolovsky, the reserve goalkeeper, is arms and fires for the second time in five minutes. This one from a little bit further out. I have to say it was rather more convincingly dealt with. This time by Kalats, who's well in behind it to catch. Segreto for Gibson. Been rather isolated up front, and hence he drops deeper, just weaves his way through a few. Meyer timed his challenge beautifully there. Go, Nicked go, it off him. Go, now Nakamura. Go, and they just can't deal with the pace of Sydney United at the moment. Arpia. It's Shunta Nakamura still, winning support and finally finding it. Maya. Pass asked quite a bit of Lasselitzer, who five years ago might have been able to chase that one down. Pitch playing quickly, it's, as I've mentioned, in superb condition. We've had hot conditions in Sydney over the past few days. Matamalo. Askew and Uchino is looking for something more adventurous to try and get they're in behind this Sydney United defence. Switch of play this time for Sean Simmons. Looking to get at the much younger Bailey Rule. He's managed to fashion a cross. Hatch getting his head to the ball to clear. And now Nakamura just looking to... Keep it off to Kota Askew, he's done it beautifully. Tom Alech. Fran, tell me. I have to say, we've watched quite a bit of Sydney United 58 so far this season. This is some of the best football they've produced in the first two and a half months. Maya. Of course, as I say that, Tarek Maya plays it out of play. Well, almost, Bazanis electing to keep it in. A quarter of the way through this match, they've been the dominant force. Goes to Aiden Milicevic and Patrick Anselmi. Second and third of the season, respectively, in the league. Anselmi, as I mentioned a little earlier, coming off the back of a hat-trick in the Waratah Cup in midweek. Some of the Apia fans trying to find their voice and drive their team on. Caspers for Uccino. Beautifully weighted pass for Askew. 
Pat has to do some defending. Get a block on the ball, but managed to push Askew wide enough. He's going to need some curl on that cross, and he couldn't generate it. Well, on the City United bench looking rather content. Why wouldn't they be? Mentioned that they needed to tighten up their defence. They were looking a little bit leaky in the early stages of the season. They really have tidied that up over the past few weeks. Clean sheet against Sutherland before. It's unfortunate to draw that game against Blacktown City 2 2. Being led twice. Of course, copping the late goal after holding out for so long against Rockdale London last weekend. They don't want to let Arpia back in here. Casper certainly thought he was fouled. Danny Horstead had a very good view. Waved it away. Danger not averted for Sydney United. Simmons in to curl one over the top. Cut out by McGing. And now they're going to look to get at them in transition again, Sydney United. It's Antelmi looking for Nakamura. It's to a uh, Improving their partnership up front. It has been a, an immediately natural one. Two with such talent, you figure it's only a matter of time. Certainly, the way they tried to bounce off one another there was only missing that final ball from Anselmi. The understanding seems to be there. Segreto down the other end, looking up with Armson. Hatch, he's just so quick, Matt Hatch. Must have one of the quickest first 10 yards in the competition. He's lightning. Got back to get his body between Segreto and the ball. The end result is a Sydney United goal kick. Mind about the rest of the coverage we're bringing you across the Football New South Wales YouTube page this afternoon. Three more games kicking off over the next hour. In fact, a couple are imminently doing so. Blacktown City taking on the Central Coast Mariners and the Western Sydney Wanderers, which Papi Alaika fans will have an eye on. It's only if their side can find a way back into this game. That has to be their immediate worry. The Wanderers hosting St George City. And at the Wanderers Football Park this afternoon. Gibson tried to time his run, but it was rather obvious to all and sundry that he'd mistimed it. Stepped offside. Those are the two games about to kick off. And then the match of the round kicking off at 4 o'clock. A tasty one. Rockdale Illenden hosting Sydney Olympic. At the Illenden Sports Centre, you can catch all those games. Where well, you found this one on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. Alex Molchanoff, delighted to be along with you for this one from Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre. Up yet, not quite enjoying their new surrounds quite as much as their opponents today. It's been quite a while, four seasons in fact, since Sydney United have failed to win this fixture away from home against Apia. Funnily enough, they've had a rather checkered records at home against Arpia. The away sides have dominated this fixture over the past five years or so. Find an explanation for that. You've got me covered in terms of your footballing intelligence. There seems to be no rhyme or reason to it. The team's comfortable playing against one another, one another, I'll say, away from home. Simmons was turning basically on the spot. Couldn't find the Maroon shirt around him. So Sydney United can carry clear again. They've got to be alive to the danger that Matt Hatch offers because he'll run into that space if he's given it. Watavalo was across to cover. And then one back by De Oliveira. Sloppy giveaway from Askew. And tell me, all alone. It gets better and better for Sydney United 58 and Patrick and tell me. He is having a field day up front, and Arpia's defence are all at sea. Only themselves to blame. Another poor giveaway, this time from Dakota Askew. 
and, and Tommy had no one near him. Had all the time in the world to pick his spot, and that's exactly what he did. Anthony Bazanis cuts a forlorn figure, but there's not too much he could have done about any of the goals. It's all about the performance of those in front of him. And it is lacking at the moment. Shunta Nakamura, the beneficiary of De Oliveira's, well, opportunism, I guess. Montemalo might have switched off thinking his job was done after he gave the ball to Askew. It didn't help him out with a turnover. It really was a sloppy sequence from Apia. Tarek Maya is just winning everything in midfield. This really could get ugly quickly because Sydney United are in full flow and Apia are not at the races. I don't think too many came here this afternoon expecting a 3-0 lead to either side after less than half an hour. It's been a performance lacking energy from Apia. A real... Something that is so uncharacteristic of this team since Franco Parisi took over last season. It's not to say they don't have the firepower to bounce back. They certainly do, but it's just not going to plan at the moment. Ben Gibson usually would be assured in a position like that of delivering something dangerous on that occasion. He's headed to the throwing enclosure behind Oliver Kalatz's net. Okay, Kalatz off his seat really for the first time this afternoon. He's not had too much to direct his side on. All's gone very to plan, very much to plan. Segreto. Once again, Hatch. Just all the little individual battles that you look for as you're watching a game of football. Sydney United are winning. Hatch has been electric down the left, both in attacking Dakota Askew and defending Jordan Segreto. The Oliveira's not had too much to do in front of him, but one time he did decide to press and win the ball off his right fullback of Arpia did that very nicely now there might just be a window back in here for Arpia Bailey Rule with a little bit of a clumsy challenge on Eddie Caspers been in fine form you, know, you wouldn't know it with his performance so far this afternoon he's hardly alone Kalatz so often is uh, almost more energetic and alert when his team are leading. Last thing he wants is a sense of complacency, particularly with this RPA like a side who can pile on goals in a hurry. Matt Hatch is once again the man in the way to head out of danger, at least for now. Ask you. Caspers ducking inside the Oliveira, linking up with Segreto, and the challenge was unfortunate. Horstead is trying to play advantage. He had his whistle up. He looked almost poised to point to the spot. Thought better of it. Much to Apia's frustration. Pacino is pleading with the referee. But better signs for Apia. That's that third goal was the one they needed to jolt them into action. Go, go. Too many complaints from the sideline, all from the players on the pitch. Nice touch from Sean Simmons. Probably been the best of the Apia players so far this afternoon. But once again, Anthony Tomalic is there to snuff out the attack before it began. Hatch. 
And with Vera, that time he couldn't escape the attention of Armson. Tarek Meyer this time winning the ball through midfield. Those two have been without peer so far this afternoon. Tomalic for Nakamura. Nice football again from Sydney United. The Oliveira's touch betrays him. Ten minutes to go till the break. You feel up here will need at least a goal back if they're to get anything from this game. Segreto. Well time drum from Armson from a deep position. He's beaten Kalats, but Bailey Rule was back there to the block. Danger still not clear though for Sydney United. Nice switch from Askew. Has just allowed Sydney United to get back into their shape. Nice touch from Nakamura. Caspers, they're going to ground again in the box, and this time Caspers, a challenge born of frustration, cleans up Adrian Vlastelitsa, and he's going to be the first name in referee Horstead's notebook this afternoon. Rightfully so, from the view we had. It was a challenge that the Sydney United captain felt the full effects of. Caspers, who's had a, a very good season so far across from Rapia Leichardt. He's been a regular starter for Franco Parisi. Got a couple of goals across those nine starts as well after making his debut in this competition as a 17-year-old at Northbridge. Still only 20. Often shows maturity above his years. Perhaps uh, a little bit of immature exuberance playing its part in that challenge. Not something we're used to seeing from Eddie. From a footballing family, of course. Two sisters playing in the A-League women's. One for the Wanderers and one for Sydney FC. Plus, well, it's it. The hope of the Sydney United physio is now back to his feet. Still looking with the little bit of a limp. <laughs> Knowing Adrian Vlasilic's character will take a, a little bit more than that to kick him out of a football match. <laughs> Certainly not adverse to it, a challenge like that every now and then. Handed out the other way either. The King who's been sterling in his work so far this afternoon. Timing his challenge well there. Pacino. They're looking to use their place here, up here, but pace here, up here, but you know, they've been so alive to the danger that they offer in behind. They've been sat nice and deep when they've needed to. Certainly not pressing high up the pitch, just applying enough when they need to. So it's up to Arpia to try and unpick the lock. They're trying to do that through Askew down the right. He's got further and further forward as this half has worn on. That's a decent ball for Gibson and beaten away by Kalatz. First meaningful save, the Sydney United goalkeeper has been called on to make other than the near error that he made a little earlier in the half where he had to smother Armson's follow-up. It's the first real chance up here have managed to create themselves. Jolly Vera on a different page to Nakamura there. Matamalo stepping in. Now Segreto. All time challenge for Di Vera to who to his credit tracked all the way back there to win the football and Hatch just belts it into Segreto behind it. Goes for a another Sydney United goal kick. At the moment, a shock as much because of the form that Arpia have been in over the past couple of months. Unbeaten in six, 
Seven, if you include the cup match in midweek. Go, go. Only draw amongst that lot was one with St. George FC a few weeks ago. That's a better time challenge from Askew, and he's got the most space that he's seen all afternoon. Still inspired to turn it over. Caspers, smart turn away from trouble. Armson trying to escape Nakamura's attention. Took his legs out from under him. Chino wants to keep it going quickly. He's found Kambiachi. Simmons outside of him. Once again, the pass was telegraphed, and Maya was able to step in and cut off the danger. Rule lost a bit of his midfielder, but Tarek Maya is seeing everything he wants out there. Seems to be happening in slow motion for him. It's a high clearance from Kalat. He got plenty of air under that one. Sean, Sims, Sean Simmons wins out in the battle for it. Now with Chino again. His passing's just been a little bit off as well this afternoon. He's already given away more than he usually does in an entire match. Hatch playing it in behind. De Oliveira's there. Once again, not dealing with the pace of Sydney United. Warapia just missing someone to gamble on it through the middle. Told you about those other games that are kicked off as well. The Western Sydney Wanderers are uh, having as bright a start as Sydney United did here. 2-0 up after less than 10 minutes. Against St. George City at Wanderers Football Park. Blackdown City and the Central Coast Mariners have only just kicked off at Landon Stadium. 0-0 after five minutes there. Nakamura. Or Kambiashi rather. Chino once again is shaking his head not because he misplaced the pass entirely but it didn't lead Askew into the area he wanted it to still up here have got the football driving forward Segreto was the meat and the sandwich between Hatch and De Oliveira Kalats managing to prevent the ball from going behind for a Johnny corner <laughs> Listen, it's Bailey Rule who's taken up a position completely unmarked this time. His ball only picked out Moatamalo. And Telmi was making an aggressive run into the back post. Couldn't pick him out. Askew for Segreto. City United will be more than happy just to go to the sheds. With a scoreline sitting as it is. Not as dominant as they were in the first half hour. That one flicks up. There are a couple of half-hearted appeals for handball. McGing stretching to clear. Manages to knock it off Caspers. Out for a throw. So not only frustrated at their performance, but also feeling they're not quite getting the rub of the green. Uh, penalty appeal to Caspers earlier in the half. Danny Horstead made a point of looking very intently at before deciding not to blow his whistle. Simmons and Armson trying to spring the offside trap. Step too early. Renath Gobinath is the assistant on the near side today. Spotted that one very quickly. He's had some weight, Renath Gobinath. He's... Uh, Seen 22 goals already, and he's not got through two matches. That's because he was on the line as well for uh, Harpier's 19-1 win over Hazelbrook in the week. Nakamura, they're not having quite as much fun this afternoon. Backhands! Puts the cherry on top of a brilliant first half performance from Sydney United 58. They can't even see up here in their rearview mirror now. They are over the hills and far away. 
a first half in which they have been absolutely outstanding in stark contrast to their opposition. Hatch has had a field day down the left. He gets his third goal of the season and it's the pick of them. A gorgeous strike which gave Bazanis very little chance of saving. And quite what Arpia do to turn the tide here. There's a question Fraco Parisi and David Aputo are going to have to think long and hard about. If 3 0 to Mountain, 4 is Everest. Nakamura said they might need a goal to get anything out of this game before the break. They desperately need it now. And Sydney United don't look set on giving them an opportunity. Nakamura's just shrugged off Armson and Antelmi. Did he time his run? Doesn't matter because he couldn't get the ball before it trickled out of play. This has been a shocking scene for Arpia supporters. Barely had to see their team behind in games in 2023. They are being put to the sword this afternoon. Simmons. Kamiyashi. Nice switch for Askew. It's not saying Arpia haven't played some nice stuff in patches. They have. Askew needs to find it. Oh, it's fallen to Segreto, who just took a moment too long to ponder his options and allow the United defence to recover. A couple of chances that Arpia have generated have gone begging. United, by contrast, have been deadly in front of goal. Rule. Striding forward. They couldn't add a fifth, could they? Oh, I tell me he's in space again. Oh, what a wonderful save from Bazanos. Keeps them in it. One of the saves of the season from Anthony Bazanos. Stretching all the way with his leg. With some assistance from the post. But the Sydney United fans are in full voice, and why wouldn't they be? A 4-0 lead to take into the break at the Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre. Aidan Milicevic started the final at the end of a beautiful cross from Matt Hatch, who'd get the fourth goal himself later in the half. Patrick Antelmi on the score sheet twice, and Arpia Leichhardt without an answer in the opening 45 minutes here in Homebush. We'll be back after the break, but as the players head down the sheds here in Sydney's inner west, it's Arpia Leichhardt nil, Sydney United 58, 4.
Welcome back to Homebush, this round 10 clash in the MPL New South Wales men's competition between Arpia Leichhardt and Sydney United. A half-time result not too many saw coming. The visitors piling on four first-half goals, two courtesy of Patrick Anselmi, one each to Matt Hatch and Aidan Milicevic, which sees United far and away. Arpia going to need something... Not too far shy of a miracle to get anything out of this one. On the back of a six-game unbeaten run, it looks as though it's going to come to a crashing halt here. Alex Molchanoff along with you on this Sunday afternoon. It's been difficult to find words to describe it at times. Up here, flat. Probably an understatement poor in possession and loose defensively while well, Sydney United have played some stunning stuff and won almost everything they've wanted through the middle of the park it's been a story of two teams heading in different directions at the moment perhaps not the directions we thought they might at the start of the afternoon but as it stands Sydney United are going to make a big big leap back towards their old rivals up here Things continue on the same trajectory. Copped a 6 0 loss this season, Sydney United 58. They might be going some way towards handing one out if Apia aren't able to swing the pendulum whatsoever in the second half. And Caparisi's decided there's not need for any changes at half time. I have to think they'll come fairly quickly if things continue as they were tracking in the first half. Sydney United fans who've travelled in good numbers, as they always tend to, have been treated to a quite fine first half of football. Throwing from rulers to Woods and Selmi, who might have had a hat-trick had it not been for the heroics of Anthony Bazanis in the Apia Leichhardt goal. Which has been the pattern of this game that has probably had a pretty good game despite shipping four goals made one of the I think what will be one of the saves of the season towards the end of that first half from Anselmi who's searching for his hat trick stretching with his right leg to knock it off the post and keep it out it's inches away from going in and making it five deals with the Sun to claim that attempted cross from Tomalic he and Tarek Mayat have formed a formidable screen in front of Liam McGing and Adrian Vlasilitsa at the back. Those two have not had too much to do so far this afternoon because of the work of their midfielders ahead of them. Vlasilitsa has played a big part in a couple of the goals as well. So they're enjoying life. Why wouldn't they be? Win today for them would be their third straight, fourth if you include their win over Pool AFC in the Australia Cup in midweek. It's Jordan Segreto trying to turn the tide with Eddie Caspers and now Dakota Askew. Giveaway led to the third goal. Can be Yashi looking for a slicing pass. A couple of nicks off Sydney United players and Uchino's clever enough to win inside the free kick. Trailing leg in there from Carlos de Oliveira. Here's Sean Simmons. Trusty left foot of his, trying to bend one in behind. Deflects out for a throw, which he takes quickly to his brother Josh. Nice touch from Kabayashi. What can Simmons deliver? Only finds Velastalitsa. Chino and, and Tommy battling for it. Kambiyashi keeping the attack alive. And Tommy all the way back there to do the defending. And even that's going right for him at the moment. So well is he playing. Even when he gives it over, it's coming back to him. And his touch. David Deputso is incredulous. There were a couple of decisions in that first half up yet. Felt compounded their issues. Certainly didn't feel as though they got the rub of the green say from a neutral point of view don't quite concur with them 
Tony Hornstead's done a quite good job in the middle so far today. That's better from Uccino, who was short of his best in the first half. This was Ben Gibson, but he's turning and looking to feed Segreto. Better signs for Arpia to start this second half. That's coming from a pretty low base. Kabayashi. It's better with him more and more involved getting forward. Wilsovic was sterling down the right in the early stages of that first half. Faded out of the game a little bit as the attention seemed to move to the left. Segreto has had trouble getting past Matt Hatch all afternoon. Can't do it there. So lays it off for Askew. Beautiful touch from Eddie Caspers. The 20-year-old gets up here driving forward again. Into a forest of white bodies and eventually Sydney United able to scrap it clear. Maya going all the way back to Kalatz who hoists it high. Points as deep as I'm sure he would have liked. Multi-ball system in use today. Able to get play going quickly. Up here will be feeding as many balls to their players as they can as quickly as possible trying to reel in this four goal advantage that they've given away to their opposition in the first half Sean Simmons on his right foot nice little bit of link up play with Armson there's been nothing wrong with his performance so far this afternoon in the pick of Arpia's midfielders certainly he might have had a goal had it not been for a sharp save from Kalatz at close range That was a situation of his own making. His reaction to it was assured and confident. Unlike the handling error which led to it. Mentioned a couple of times. A decent crowd in here today at Sydney Olympic Park. Mostly up here fans, but Sydney United supporters who found their voice. The performance of their team. Six minutes into this one, Arpia have managed to swing the pendulum a little. Simmons ball thumps off rule. Back for Kambiashi. Kaspers, who's getting more and more involved. He's looking to play the return ball. Had too much on it. Easily swept up by Kalatz with the help of McGinn. in the first half the substitutes that Barisi does have available to him should he look there Jack Stewart is up behind the goal of Bazanas warming up along with Rory Jordan two good attacking options that you think Parisi will look to sooner rather than later temperature just starting to drop a little after the break so at about 25 degrees here this afternoon the sun has set a little conditions becoming even even but even more terrific for football pitches held up nicely everything's been there to play good football and Sydney United have taken advantage of those conditions I'll be rather less so it's well and truly reflected on the scoreline Caspers again He's so closely marshaled. Sydney United are well aware of the danger he poses. Rule wins it back and drives forward. And tell me in a wrestling match with Martimalo. That's a contest that's been rolled so many times down the years. And this time, and tell me wins out. Not in terms of the battle. But in the fact that he's won his sights a corner kick. Arpia have actually looked fairly assured defending these situations this afternoon. It's been in open play when United have been able to get at them on the counter-attack where they've had issues. There's plenty crowded around Anthony Bazanis here, but Hatch opts to go short. Interchange of passes with Milicevic. That's a dangerous ball. Josh Simmons hangs out a left boot. Milicevic again took a deflection through then, and it's made it. A little bit easier to deal with for Pizanis. Kambiyashi's popped up on the right. Whether he's been given more license to do that or whether it was just a 
Happy opportunity from the situation. Either way, he's able to deliver, and Ben Gibson was climbing. Just couldn't launch himself high enough to get above that ball and keep it down. Sean Simmons might have been waiting with a, almost a tap-in at the back post. Had he let it run, didn't get the call. So Arpi is still in search of their first goal this afternoon. Josh Simmons looking a little more assured than he did in the first half, just without the pressure. Well, Nakamura's decided to press. The footwork from Bazanas to find Uchino, and this ball's on the money from the Apia skipper. Segreto's there. Just a yard off. It's been a theme of the afternoon for the nominal hosts this afternoon. Smartware from Maya, who's barely put a foot wrong all afternoon, and he's just skipped past a couple of Arpia players. Eventually, Caspers brings the mazy run to an end. Caspers for Askew. Arpia moving the ball a lot better than they did in any of the first half. Still looking for the killer pass, though. And the Sydney United defence that have found its stoutness in the past, past few months past couple of weeks rather. Askew again with a teasing cross. Oh and Simmons didn't anticipate the ball getting all the way to him. Might have done better. A couple of testing deliveries from Arpia in the opening 10 minutes of this second half. Certainly looking far more dangerous in attack than they did in the first period. Simmons. All over the top. Caspers didn't time his run. We expected changes. We wondered how long it was going to take, but it looks as though Jack Stewart is receiving his final words from David Deputzo. He's got his bib in his hands, looking as though he's ready to go. And Sydney United taking as much time as they're allowed over this free kick. All the Kalats took a, a long time to decide he was going to take it. Certainly got plenty of uh, power behind it. It almost up into the opposition 18 yard box. It's all worked out very nicely for Sydney United. And Tommy in a tight space couldn't turn out of trouble. Guatemala, again, De Oliveira, who caused a couple of telling turnovers in the first half, was sensing another chance to create something dangerous. Arthur well, managed to play out this time, though. Segreto, ask you forward again. Looking to reset through a Chino this time. Guatemala, Josh Simmons. Kaviyashi right on the touchline, judged it to perfection, but couldn't bring it back inside Milicevic. Won it back, can he keep this one in? He has, no, not quite. Ball in the back of the net, but the flag was up on the far side. Far be a sense of a lifeline and perhaps, well, perhaps that dissipates somewhat. And, the sense of injustice they're feeling about all that's unfolding this afternoon has just increased a little. Though it did look fairly clear that that ball had gone over the byline. So now the changes. Jack Stewart the first of them. Jack Armson's afternoon over. The chance fell his way in the first half after a sloppy piece of work from Oli Kalats, but he managed to recover and make the save. And Rory Jordan, the second man on, scored in the Waratah Rory Cup final Jordan. against this opposition last weekend, or last year rather. He's replacing Jordan Segreto, who's had a torrid afternoon on the far side. Uchino lashing out at the Oliveira as he tried to knock the ball over the top of him. It's a rather firm body check. Doesn't draw a booking. Does give Sydney United another set piece in a dangerous position. 
Take it short. Harch for De Oliveira. Turned it a yard behind Shunta Nakamura. Almost won back his own giveaway. All over the top. And Jack Stewart's first touch. Well, it won't be his first touch because the ball has travelled out of play. Shadow's getting longer here at Sydney Olympic Park and his chances of getting back in the game fading by the minute. Uchino. Wiley as always, but he hasn't been able to drive himself or his team into positive enough positions this afternoon. Lisevic without a lot of support ahead of him. Needs to get back because up here have got numbers if they move this quickly enough. Sean Simmons, there's a pass that sums up the afternoon. That's probably it for Apia. Play with so much quality who you expect to make a pass like that, turning it over. And now they're open at the back. They're lining up. Nakamura and tell me. Nakamura will go himself and make it five for Sydney United. Another poor turnover. A lackluster recovery, and they're punished again. Nakamura gets his name on the score sheet, deserved for what he's been able to produce either side of half time. And since he's moved to the club, really, where he's been a shining light in some poor performances, he adds an exclamation point to this one. A fourth goal of the season. For the former Japanese under-19 international. It was an unerring finish when the chance presented itself to him. Matamalo did all he could to get in the way, but he was able to generate a yard, and that was all he needed, Shunta Nakamura. And the errors continue for Apia. Dakota Askew is having an afternoon he'd rather forget. It's time as Kaspers, who's had it nicked off his toe by Tomalic. Simmons pressing rule, but all he can do is concede the throw. And if there was any sort of light at the end of the tunnel for Arpia, it might have just been stuffed right out. can they get after this final half hour there is still half an hour to play here a couple of goals would be nice they managed to find a few in that opening round defeat to Blacktown City in which they considered six and certainly there is a worry now for the reigning premiers in terms of their response when going behind certainly also, they're set up defensively. They are being left far too wide open to attacks on the counter. Sydney United have been deadly there this afternoon. This topsy-turvy league always throws up surprises. This is certainly one of them. Up here would have been, probably been the favourites of the majority coming into the afternoon which makes the nature of this loss even more shocking. Gloria Bercic. Cuccino. Not too many times he's been in the centre of a, a thumping this big. Stewart. First real touch. And already finding Jordan, the two substitutes combined to win Arpia a penalty kick. Yellow card for Kalats. The first real chance the two substitutes for Franco Parisi have had to link up and immediately they generate a big, big chance. Jordan timing his run beautifully to get him behind the Sydney United defence, found superbly by, uh, by uh, Jack Stewart rather, and it will be he to strike this penalty. He got the scoring underway against Hazelbrook in the week from a penalty 
Rather different circumstances here this afternoon. But that form will be nice for confidence. No mistake there from Jack Stewart. A telling introduction in what might be a well-beaten team. But he's more than happy with that, particularly given his history with this opposition. Scored against Sydney United at Sydney United last season. And he's managed to add his name to the score sheet, although it will probably only be a consolation this afternoon. Rory Jordan, he's been all action since coming on, won the penalty, he's on the end of this one. And his feet betraying him at the crucial moment. Plastelitz are looking somewhat bemused as uh, Manny was trying to defend, just fell over his own feet. And then, I think it's Eddie Caspers over there, who's flown into another challenge, another free kick against him. Steve Trace will be on the field for RPR. And now Danny Horstead is making his way over to the near side. Send him rip. It's something that either Parisi or De Puzzo has said. I think the yellow card is to Parisi. Fourth, fourth official, Rowan Fisher had had enough. Updates from elsewhere. Well, getting plenty of goals around the grounds as well. The Western Sydney Wanderers in St. George City at the break. 5-1 to the Wanderers. They'll be staying top tonight. Quite terrific performance. And Marcus Eunice has got on the score sheet after playing in the Sydney Derby in the A-League men's last night as well. Some 24 hours for him. And at the break at Landon Stadium between Blacktown City and the Central Coast Mariners, it's Blacktown City 1. Central Coast Mariners nil. That goal coming right on the stroke of half time. So the action in front of us. Say Akambiyashi is trying to pick apart his opposition defence. Stewart's been rather good at doing that since coming on. Picking red that ball all the way. And tell me, even when he doesn't do what he plans to, it seems to be falling his way at the moment. Tomalic is sweeping past. Not quite as effective. Guatemala. Can Arpia launch the most unlikely of comebacks here? Jordan. For Simmons. Still plenty of time left on the clock here. 23 minutes plus whatever is a judge to be added on. Jordan. Might have used an arm to control. No. So a shot. Had it been on target, would have counted. Fortunately for Oliver Kalatz, it never really got within Kui of him. Rory Jordan having a bosh. To no avail. Stewart for Askew. He's found the ball with his the ball at his feet a lot this afternoon. Seems like I'd have been happy for it to go there. Twisting and turning was Gibson. Nakamura putting an end to the run. And Sydney United will be just happy to keep the ball. This is the sort of pattern of a game that they like where they're able to dictate terms and control the tempo. They've done so across the nice 70 minutes that we've played so far here. Stefan de Robillard is being readied by the Sydney United coaching staff. He might fancy getting his second goal of the league season. He can get himself on. Jack Stewart's continuing to try and get his team going the other way. Just picked off. They're just so tight back there at the moment, Sydney United. And this time it's Rory Jordan dragging Shunta Nakamura down. It's been a headache in both halves for RPL Leichhardt this afternoon. 
Now the change does come. A big hand paid by the Sydney United supporters to Tarek Maya. But despite not getting on the score sheet, has probably been their best today. He takes the well-earned applause. The 26-year-old, he was ancient Nakamura's youth career. Eric Meyer was a Joey nine times. He's been the beating heart of Selko Kalatz's midfield so far this season. Absolutely superb this afternoon. Alongside that man, Anthony Tomlich. Should be no surprises there. One of United's most consistent the, the past half decade. Guatemala put under pressure by the fresh legs of De Robillard. Well enough to sort it out between he and Bazanas. Askew has got plenty of running power, but not quite as fresh legs. Eventually draws the free kick. Chino for Sean Simmons. Kamiyashi, always lively. Not quite as effective as he would have liked this afternoon, although this could change that. Even that ball was just a, a little off the mark. Jordan retrieves, fires it back to him. And now it's Jack Stewart giving the ball away. It's just been all and sundry at sea today for Arbia Leichhardt. Corey Jordan with a, a firm challenge. He actually looked to pull out of it, but he'd committed. He's given a quiet talking to by referee Danny Horstead. Nick Sullivan's going to be thrust into the fire here by R.P. Leichhardt as well. A pretty bright start to life in R.P. Colours. Hasn't known a day as dark as this yet. Chino's range of passing, usually so terrific, is just today the radar's not quite been there. Nice touch from De Oliveira. And now De Robillard might look to line up. Instead, he looks for Milicevic. On the one two, found its way through. Aiden Milicevic, good save from Bazanis. Back to and tell me, Bazanis again. And who knows where they would have been without him. And uh, tell me. Gets into it with Danny Orsted because he felt he was ill-positioned and gets himself a booking as well. He wanted that hat-trick. Sean Simmons, who's well, had the best day, takes his bow. And Nick Sullivan, pick up the position, Rory Jordan moving out onto the left. Look at that up, his depth. They're just showing it off off the bench today. The problem is they haven't been able to get the performance. All the administration done for Horstead and his team. They're back underway. Minder later tonight, or later this afternoon rather. Bokdell Illenden kicking off against Sydney Olympic. That game's just about due to kick off. You can find that game wherever you're watching this one on the Football New South Wales live tab on our YouTube page. Big game that one down at the Illinois Sports Centre this afternoon. Olympic would love nothing more than to jump back into the top half with a win over their biggest rivals. Kamiyashi was showing plenty of endeavour at getting forward, but his cross came back off him. Run was to no avail. Some of the players are really driving forward and trying to get themselves back into this game, but just for the execution, particularly with the ball this afternoon, has really hurt them. Vulnerable in transitions, we've mentioned a number of times. United looking content, not quite as proactive as they were in the first half, but with such a lead, 
Why would they need to be? De Oliveira for Nakamura. Being wrestled to ground by Uchino. Free kick goes United's way. Not the most opportune time for this performance to come from Arpia. Either it's not to say it won't be recoverable, but they could have moved a point. Just a single point behind Western Sydney Wanderers with a win today. Could have gone top had the Wanderers dropped points. It's not going to be the case now as Gibson wants the free kick and gets it. A little bit clumsy from Liam McGing. Wanted to prevent it from going out for a corner and instead he's considered a free kick just in field of the quarter deep. Danny Horstead's still having words, I think, with Ben Gibson now. Not quite sure what about because he's got the free kick. Anyway, that's all squared away. And Sayer Kambiashi is ready to launch in this free kick. It's not his best effort, and Kalat's made catching practice of it. Those days for Arpia where nothing clicks. Kalatz is staying down asking for attention. That's going to be received now. A quick look at what's coming up for both. I said it wasn't an opportune time for Arpia. That's because they're facing Rockdale Illenden next weekend. That one's scheduled back for Leichhardt Oval at 4.30 on Sunday. It's moving there, and then they're out in Sydney's west with a couple of games against the academy sides, the Western Sydney Wanderers, who, of course, are the league leaders at the moment, and don't look like that. Doesn't look like that's going to change this afternoon, given their 5-1 lead at Wanderers Football Park. As for Sydney United, this is just the ticket for them with a, a big. Fairfield Derby clash next weekend against Marconi Duke. He's out there watching that one. Being a company for that one as well. Sunday, 3 o'clock kickoff at the Sydney United Sports Centre in Edenza Park. It'll be an exciting one. Sydney United will be hoping that their form continues. Marconi got a 2-1 win last night. Took a 2-0 lead against Manly United before copping a late consolation. Manly fallen into a Maya after winning their opening game of the season. They're without one since. Sitting second bottom. Nice football from Sydney United. I feel like I've said that plenty of times this afternoon. Wolves ball cut out by Say Kambiashi. A couple more changes coming. For Arpia Leichhardt in a matter of moments. Askew. For Stewart, who's dropped into a central midfield position. Plays it wide for Caspers. Looking for the return and gets it now. Can he sum up? McGing did well to get the first touch and then just knock it behind before the Arpia players could get around him. Still not committing all bodies forward as they search for a second goal here. Simmons straight up in the air. Kalatz into a jumpy contest with Ben Gibson. Kalatz didn't appreciate that, giving him a little shove. Has got the free kick. Manny Orsted says, just let me deal with that, thanks. Here come those substitutions that we mentioned for Arpia Leichhardt. It's going to be Nicolas Azone. To be brought on, as well as Louis de Troyer, who we mentioned. He's got a terrific story. Sixth appearance in the MPL New South Wales men's competition after making the move from the MPL South Australia. Eddie Caspers and Adrian Uccino, the two removed. 
Questions will begin about where it went wrong. Game up here with. Quite heavy favorites for. Here's Simmons. Nice touch from Jordan. To the fresh legs of the Detroit. Good well, he's looking sharp. Certainly fresh. Sharpness didn't translate to the cross. It was mishit and finds its way behind onto the running track that surrounds us here in Sydney Olympic Park. Ten minutes to play here. If you're just joining us, I hope you like our trailed 4 0 at the break. It's thanks to a brace from Patrick Adselby, who might have had a third had it not been for a very good save from Anthony Bazanis late in the half. Those two goals coming between the opener from Aiden Milicevic, courtesy of a beautiful ball from Matt Hatch. And a fourth added by Matt by Hatch himself. Before Shunta Nakamura scored the fifth here in the second half. Sydney United's clean sheet was dirty though after the introduction of Jack Stewart and Rory Jordan who combined to win half a penalty kick which Stewart converted. That's his scoreline sitting at 5-1. Nice work from Gibson. He's worked hard up front today without too much reward and he shrugged off the attentions of a couple of challenges there. Last the lights of the third across. Firm in his work to clear the danger. He's a Zone, tidy midfield player. Turned over by Stewart and Hatch will look to stretch his legs. We've seen his pace in evidence plenty of times. The ball into Antelmi who looking for three. Knew where the goal was, just couldn't get his feet to cooperate. Fed in beautifully by Matt Hatch, who has been outstanding all afternoon. Move from Marconi, bearing fruit for both he and his new employer. Tom H getting into a, a bit of a wrestle with Tretoria. Guatemala's taken the armbands. I think he'll want too much of a responsibility for this afternoon's school line though. Sullivan, who can strike them from distance, is looking to slalom his way through a forest of bodies. Gibson gives it a go. Eventually clear by United. Martamalo. And Telby's just crashing into people and retaining possession. He's wanted it more than his op opponents there. Durobola continuing the attack, running at Askew, it's Durobola! Palmed away by Bazanis again. He's been very, very good this afternoon. As the scoreline might suggest, he's had to get through plenty of work as well. But your day his players and certainly their supporters will remember a while and not for the right reasons. Sydney United looking to become the second team to hit them for six this season as Blackdown did in round one. It was a shock that day. It's been just as shocking this afternoon. Milicevic and Hatch, they've formed a beautiful little partnership down the left, the two Central Coast Mariners juniors. Milicevic and Selmy always seems to find a yard of space. Eventually it comes down for him, Tomalic. Struggled with the inside of his boot rather than the instep. That meant it was presented at a fairly comfortable height for Bazanis. Feel that Sydney United can sense a sixth though. Sullivan. Kambiashi. 
Stewart's turned it over. Even this bug that has caught the Arpia team has caught Stewart coming off the bench after his bright start. Sullivan drags his opposite number, Nakamura, to the ground. Another free kick going Sydney United's way. And now a chance for a little bit of celebration. I don't know how Selby will be too happy about his substitution. Might have felt he could have had a hat trick. Anthony Tomilic has a, a big smile and a handshake for Zelko Kalat. Shake of the head for Antelmi, but there are bigger days ahead for him. His work is done, and now he does share a laugh with Coach Kalat. On for them, Alessandro Lacalandra, who's been in good form. And he is by his, as a sub by Kalat so far this season. And Akadanakoski has been the almost regular substitute around this time of the game with City United leading in as a, another screener in front of Lastelitza and McGing. Essentially three centre halves on the pitch now for Kalat. Oliveira has been tireless in his work down the left. Just to draw the free kick from Azone. Four and a half minutes plus whatever stoppage time is played out until Arpia fans are put out of their misery. Type of afternoon that they've not known the like of for quite some time. Rory Jordan. Looking at him, but Robolab was hard working enough to get back there and make the block. Let's have a look at how the tables. Look at the end of tonight. The Western Sydney Wanderers poised to get a 27 points. That leaves them five ahead of Marconi. Rockdale could close that gap to four if they win this game against Sydney Olympic, which has kicked off nil-nil after 13 mil minutes at the Illinois Sports Centre. Now up here in fourth. They'll be held there tonight. Sydney United will jump a couple of spots. They'll be up into sixth, into those finals positions. With this win here tonight. Jumping above both St. George City and the Wollongong Wolves. We'll ease the pain of the loss to Rockdale so late last week. Just a little. Watamalo, it's a nice ball and an even better back heel. Sullivan was trying to trick his way past one more. Over the top and there's willing runners in the form of Lacalandra. He's got plenty of pace. Watamalo using all his experience to just turn out of trouble. Simmons, Josh that is. Poor touch from Stewart. And it's willing running from Louis Detroit, but ultimately fruitless as the throwing goes United's way. Just two more minutes now sitting between them and what will go down as a famous victory. Josh Simmons. Azone. Askew bombing on again. What's he got this time? He's really just not been able to pick out a player in Maroon. All oh, spilled by Kalatz and then off the line by McGing. Nearly a second. Kalatz has been lucky. He hasn't been caught a couple of times this afternoon. Spilling the ball like that. that time it, first time around he managed to bail himself out. That time he needed McGing's help. Might just give up here a bit of a spark. Kambiyashi runs into a dead end. Watamalo for Askew. 
It's going to be a fifth straight win for Sydney United 58 away from home against Apia as well, which is a pretty remarkable record in itself. Josh Simmons for Jack Stewart. Curling ball too much. And this time, Kalatz makes rather lighter work of it. Last victory cigar for Zoko Kalatz in terms of a couple of substitutes he can bring on to give some time to Jordan Ivancic and Christian Gonzalez. Aidan Milicevic given a standing ovation by the Sydney United supporters. He got the scoring started. Inside 15 minutes. And Matt Hatch, who, for this commentator, has been their man of the match. An outstanding performance at left back, which got him an assist and a superb goal. His third of the year. He's, at the moment, the competition's standout left fullback. It's Sullivan. Ask you again. Been an improved second half from him. Good switch of play for Stewart. Might come back for Ask you if he judges it right. Gonzalez made that a little bit more difficult than it needed to be, although it looked spectacular. McGing more straightforward in his clearance. Ask you again with space to try and deliver a cross. That's a better one. Gibson got a touch, but the last one was off McGing. And it's behind for an Arpia Leichhardt corner. <laughs> Lobbed in by Stewart. Martimalo! Kalatz right on his line. Keeps it out. Could have been something just a little bit sweeter for Arpia. Not to be. That question's been answered or asked. Most of the time this afternoon, that's been the answer. Not to be. For the hosts. Jack Stewart's penalty kick, the exception. All in behind for Azone. Just asked a little bit too much of him, and then the throwing goes Sydney United's way as well. Reiterate again for those watching. If you are still watching as an RPA Leichhardt fan, credit to you. Game against Rockdale. That Leichhardt Oval scheduled for 4.30 next Sunday afternoon. Whereas Sydney United 58, who will be locked in on this game all the way to the finish, savouring every moment. Take on Marconi in that big Fairfield derby next weekend at 3 o'clock at the Sydney United Sports Centre. We expected a similar sort of fire to this contest. As it's turned out we haven't had it. Simply because... Sydney United led 4-0 within 40 minutes. It's an outcome I don't think even the best fortune teller in the world could have come up with. Have been signalled that there were four minutes to be added on by the fourth official, Rowan Fisher. Sydney United are going to play that out as slowly as possible and savour what has been a superb performance this afternoon. More than deserving of the three points befitting their efforts. To Robillard, still chasing lost causes. Couldn't take that one in play. A 
Montesquieu has just not found his passing range this afternoon. Gonzalez trying to get in behind him. Pace not his biggest strength. And Danny Horstead brings a brilliant afternoon for Sydney United 58 to a close. Four first half goals, two to Patrick Anselmi and one each to Matt Hatch. A bullet from the edge of the area after Aidan Milicevic got the scoring started. Shunta Nakamura added one more after the break. A well taken effort in its own right. And Apia only able to manage one consolation. Rory Jordan winning the penalty. Jack Stewart, his fellow sub, converting it on what was an otherwise bleak afternoon for the hosts here. Plenty to think about before their return home to face Rockdale Illenden next weekend. Sydney United will go into their derby clash against Marconi full of fire. It's been a pleasure to bring you this one on Sunday afternoon from Sydney Olympic Park. Don't go anywhere. There's plenty of action continuing in the NPL New South Wales men's across our YouTube page. Just click the live link to see all the games that we've got going on there in both the men's and the women's competition. They've got a full slate in the MPL New South Wales women's as well going this afternoon with most of those games kicking off at five o'clock. But it's Alex Molchanoff signing off here from Homebush where it has finished. RPL Leichhardt 1, Sydney United 58, 5.